so should have really had a better intro slide before this. Um, right, so a bit about me. Uh, I'm a Christy Kemper. Um, I've been seen with or without a beard if you've seen me around. Um, I've been at like Geekest Drink and stuff in the past, so you may or may not have seen my face. Um, I've been in the industry quite a while now. It's like I started out yeah, a long ass time ago. It's getting 10 years, quite a while. Um, I have written a book in the past. Um, I'll get onto that a little bit. And yes, I am figuratively shitting myself. Look at all these people. And what is that noise? I heard that before. <laughs> no, because it's I recognise it. I just it's uh, it was bugging me what it was. <laughs> God damn Beckham. <laughs> right, so yeah, so I actually did write a book on version control. And um <laughs> I tried to find a picture of it, um, but one guy left a one-star review of this book on Amazon, and, uh, but, which I don't mind, like fair enough, criticism and all that, but um, it, the reason he gave for it was he said the code samples don't work, and I don't know if you've ever like, had a code book, but the code samples never work, you just use them for reference, so I find that quite annoying. But um, one guy did, though, email me and said it helped him with stuff, which is quite nice, but that's pretty much the only positive and or negative criticism I got about it, so that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, when I, when I wrote that, um, I was primarily using SVN rather than Git, and that was um, it was like a deep dive into all the different kinds of version control rather than just that. So it was a bit of a mismatch. It didn't really go uh, go the way I planned with it, but it could have been better. So uh, yeah. So now I don't use SVN as much. Um, been using Git properly now for well, yeah, the longest time for at least the last two companies, um, and I'm still wearing my, my nerdy T-shirt, trying to keep that going through. Um, so this, although um, it's going to be quite a low-level dive into Git, um, there's a lot more detail that could be had. Um, but I say this will be quite low right now. All right. So um, let me. I need to see the level of Git here. So who has never used version control or very little understanding of Git or anything like that? Wow, this is going to be really boring for ninety-five percent of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to go three tiers of that question, hoping that was going to be a little bit more hands, and then say who's just waiting for the next talk. But that's pretty much the sense of my question. So this is going to be quite interesting. And um, so for the like five of you that don't know what's going on, then this could be quite all right. <laughs> oh my days! <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Pretty much, you've used version control to make sure that you've got a backup when something goes wrong. Um, whether it's like say in SVN version or whatever else, you just need some kind of backup. You could even use Dropbox if you really wanted to. Saved my ass when I was writing my book, so definitely works as a version control system. Uh, just not a properly reliable one. Um, oh God. <laughs> yeah. So you should make sure you're using version control. Saves your ass, but I'm sure you all are very aware of that. Uh, fuck is Git. Now, although you probably already know this kind of stuff, but the in as to why it was named was quite interesting, because the last time I tried to look this up for the book, there was a lot of different info. But um, I do like the fact that it <laughs> it's close to Git, but it's also still a Git. So I quite like the naming. But yeah, it's um, been around since 2050, um, 2005, and made it. To, Linus Torvalds made it to help manage the Linux kernel, uh, and he got bored of using uh, BitKeeper and that it was proprietary, so he decided to do an open source version. Very interesting stuff. So, oh, <laughs> it's like telling your granny to suck eggs. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, if you're in an empty repo, you can get in it for the joy of doing that. Um, if you don't already use a git ignore file, you really should be using one. Um, you can use a global git ignore file, not that I think it's here, but that's also pretty handy for getting rid of whatever dot .ds store files in the Mac and shit. Um, <laughs> you'll see something like this. Well, the second thing, if you actually do it. Um, <laughs> don't even know why. Um, God, you can clone them properly. Oh, Jesus. Um, Uh, right. <laughs> it's all like this, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know, but uh, I was so scared about this. I really was scared about this, and uh, the organizers will know I was scared about this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I can't even rush through because then there'll be extra time, and that's not any good. So it's pretty much stuck with me for 20 minutes. So I'm going to have to find some way to make this extend a bit. Um, 
Well, it's, well, you got down to <laughs> centralized and distributed are the main two. But now that the distributed one with Mercurial and well, Mercurial is only used now in like really ridiculous scenarios. Um, in like, because it's when it comes down to doing a lot of actions, Mercurial is slightly better, but still doesn't help. The same concepts basically the same. Actually, oh, I'll I'll just teach you how to suck eggs. How about that? So yeah. <laughs> if you've got an initial file, you can get your status from all that. Gives you all that. Um, <laughs> totally knocked off. <sighs> right, hang on. Yeah, is a diff. Don't know if you've ever seen a diff before. That's what one of them looks like. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me go through. Yeah, if you didn't already know about get reset hard head, it's actually quite very useful. It sets you back to your repository, back to the way it was before you actually made any changes, although any new files will still be there, which is quite good. Um, so yeah, if you diff a file, you'll get something like this, which shows you the new additions with pluses and minuses and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> if you modify some files, your git status will look something like this, which is great. Um, oh God. <laughs> yeah, and then you commit something and then it does that and then it gives you some glorious commit message stuff. <laughs> um, Deleting files can be quite interesting. You can do it in a few ways. Um, I normally just delete them in the terminal. I mean, not in the terminal, in the file browser, just so I know which file is which. Um, and then when you go back to Git, it'll tell you it's been deleted, um, which is quite handy, because then you can just RM it with Git, and then it just goes away. If you can't be bothered to delete it, and you just want to, um, if, well, if you want to delete it for Git and keep the file itself, you can do that dash dash cached flag, which will, um, make it so that the actual file stays, but then the git reference goes away. Um, and obviously, if you want to do a directory, you've got to make sure that you whack R on to make it recursive. Otherwise, it'll just complain and say that you can't delete a directory because and actually it tells you to use dash R. So it's uh, pretty helpful like that when it wants to be. Uh, oh, branching, yay. <laughs> so very basic example of branching there. So the master trunk is assumed to be in the middle. Obviously, when you branch off at different points, you then take a copy of it as it is and then move it onto another branch where you can experiment, do whatever else, and then you potentially merge it back in if you want to, or if you want, you can delete it, and if it doesn't mean anything. Um, well, I imagine everyone's using branching. If you're not, you should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get it's generally standard practice. You can do like a feature branch for something else, um, especially if you're doing group collaboration or teamwork. Um, you make sure that you can do a PR for it sometimes or a pull request, um, making sure that everyone's got the thing, that generally just on a branch. And then when everything's sorted, you'll then merge that branch in um, with what's it called it? After all the support's been there. Oh, not doing too bad. <laughs> been nine minutes. <laughs> um, you can also, well, obviously merge the branches in when you're on there. You can, um, you can merge the branch. Uh, forget the way around. You can um, normally it's easier just to go on the branch you want to be on to merge the other one in, and then just do git merge branch name, and then it'll pull that branch into yours. Um, but unless you delete it, it'll still be there. So it's one thing to keep in mind. Didn't know that? <laughs> um, checkout's quite useful. Um, it's normally used for like switching between branches and stuff, but you can also use it for resetting files. Um, and although I don't use it probably as much as I should, the hours there stuff's quite useful, but when it's like from the SVN side of things, that was really easy and a lot more intuitive. For that, I just keep forgetting about it um, and end up just fixing, uh, fixing merge conflicts manually, but I will slightly touch on that in a little bit. Uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you... Um, when you're collaborative working, especially when you're using distributed stuff. I mean, the, um, regardless of whether it's a centralized or distributed system, you will have to push and pull if you're going to be collaborating with people. Because in Git, unless you actually push your code, um, <laughs> you're not going to be anywhere. Um, you've got to make sure that everything stays in sync. I really apologize for this, guys. It's totally threw me off that like 95% of you put your hands up straight away. It's just like, I'm very actively aware that I'm telling you things you already know. So it's like, it's slightly frustrating. I do apologize. Do you want to ask us again? Don't know if that would help me. <laughs> 
And not only enough, I actually screwed it up anyway and missed out loads of stuff on committing, so I'm just already on pulling. <laughs> um, I can't even remember what the... Uh, ah, yeah, conflict management. Yeah, conflicts are a bitch on Git. Um, <laughs> you, so you'll see something like that if you get a conflict. It's, uh, normally, well, conflict occurs when two people have edited the same file in generally the same place and it can't be auto-merged, which Git tries to do when it does a pull. So it'll auto-merge all your stuff together, but if it can't, it'll just conflict the file and then knock the commit back. That's done. So if you do a git status when you've got a um, merge conflict, you'll see the commit that it's thingy done. Um, you'll then see all the files that have been modified, and then you'll have one fucked up file, or many fucked up files, depending on how uh, how broken it's been or how unfortunate you are with the commit gods. Uh, so then you've got to pretty much go in and sort it out. The, um, there's like, you can set up diff tools and stuff to use it, but I don't know about you guys, but I don't like using them. I don't really, it, the visual diff tools don't really help me out too much. I um, find it a lot easier to actually just hunt for the uh, for the arrows and equals in the uh, in the files and just try and sort it out that way because, I don't know, I don't, especially when the syntax highlighting goes a bit weird, it doesn't doesn't look very nice for some of the indentation and stuff for some of the code. Um, but that's just obviously my personal preference. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, oh yeah, pretty much covered that already. Yeah, so once you've um, once you've resolved the conflict, you can't um, unless you actually re-add the file. It won't let you do anything. Um, you won't be able to pull or push or anything else because you're stuck. So you need to then re-add it and do another commit to make sure to merge everything together. Or you can use that checkout all ours or theirs um, to try and do it. But yeah, I can even though I can I always hunt for it and always forget what it is. It's still very handy to have. Um, I need to start using it more often. The uh, yeah. Git log by itself is rubbish, and I never use it. But the uh, the pretty one line version, I should have really had a screenshot in that lovely uh, lovely blank space there of what that actually looks like. That would have been really helpful. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, rather than t so the standard view, it does like it's like four lines are essentially per commit. Um, it'll have a commit message, the hash, and everything nicely spaced out. The one line one just puts the hash and then the message straight after each other, so it makes it a lot easier to skim past all your previous commits. Um, and that one is a glance can be quite handy, and it's always good for um, like keeping looking back at Git log, especially if you need to roll back some commits. Like um, if you need to, yeah, if you've accidentally went too far, it's always dipping into Git logs. Always a good habit to get into. You um, at the very least, you can just nab the commit hashes out of there so you can knock something back, or know how many you've got to till back if you um, if you need to check on another branch. <laughs> there. <laughs> Stashing is uh, fantastic, and of, although if you uh, accidentally double stash, you can uh, cause yourself uh, a lot of pain if you don't actually know about stash, li uh, stash apply, because uh, I accidentally double stash myself once. I think I had to, um, <laughs> I had, to <laughs> had to do a pull, um, had to do a pull, stashed, and then accidentally stashed my stash, and then when I did stash apply, it was redoing my change, and then it wouldn't go over. So I then got stuck in a dodgy loop, and I was like, I've stashed all of the code I've been working on. Like, what the hell am I going to do? Um, so then, see, you can uh, you can do git stash list, um, which will actually give you all your stashes. You get the ID of it, and then you can apply it, and it's great. Uh, <laughs> very relieving after you thought you'd lost all your work that you'd been working on for like two days, which you should have really committed, but you didn't because. Well, there's no real excuse, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson since then, though. I do actually try and do a lot more commits. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the most terrifying things, because I genuinely didn't know how to get it back. I thought it was gone. Um, so yeah, uh, in git stash apply, the stash ID will be uh, there. Uh, ah, yeah. So, um, think the, so commit messages. No matter how long you've been using git or whatever else, you'll still use shit commit messages like every once in a while. So not that you can see this example, but this one here is the dude going like, and that's uh, Martin's commit message. <laughs> I nabbed it off him when I saw it and I was like, give me that, I want to put it in my presentation. Um, and ironically enough, he came back to that commit because he needed to do something on it and didn't actually have a clue what he'd done in the commit. Because the problem, like when you're doing it at the time, you don't really care what the message is because like, oh shit, I don't care, I'm just, I'm working on something. But if you come back and you're like, oh, what was I thinking again? And it, the time that you actually need to go back is when you need the messages. So taking that extra time to try and write like informative commit messages, even if it just notes for yourself, because theoretically no one else will read them if nothing goes wrong. But um, it's always nice to have that actual, uh, 
actual message for yourself. It's like, so there's one from uh, from Mr. Anthony Sterling there as well, which is a lot of whip commits, which he loves to do. It's a work in progress, but uh, I know I'm I know I'm a victim of this occasionally. But it's just you say if you had to go through and uh, work out what one of those was, like, mm -hmm. and also uh, if you haven't been on what the commit before, um, it's quite funny. It just gives you just random ass commit messages, but they're generally just all terrible. Um, so even if that's one thing you take from this, at least just try and make your commit messages better because it will make your life easier in the long run, especially if you have to go back. Um, yeah, for the event, there's GUIs too, but I'm sure you're all aware of them. Uh, the, uh, I, I did really like GitHub for Mac um, back when they first released it, but so I've heard it went a bit rubbish um, as time's gone on. Source tree, other way around, I used to hate, but it's gotten a lot better over the years. Um, Source tree is free, um, and it's probably worth dipping into. It's Bitbucket's own version, but um, you can use it with other stuff as well, so it's quite uh, it's quite handy. That's my because um, at work we have a lot of repos, so occasionally if I need to check if we've got a lot of commits going, I've just got all my repos out in there, so I can see if I need to pull any of them, because otherwise you've got to go in and individually pull everything, which is a very pain in the ass. So it's nice having some kind of visual representation to like say, oh, I do actually have to pull. Um, because sometimes you can be working away and totally forget because obviously it just doesn't tell you if you don't need a pull, so always handy. Um, oh God. Well, oh, that's not too bad. All right, so real world examples. Uh, don't want to add the whole file. Yeah, you should really know about git add p. If you really don't, um, then it's absolutely amazing. It's like the best thing ever. Uh, just um, it splits the file up in hunks. You can then, um, you can individually edit a hunk. You can take out slight, um, one or two lines, you can take out a full thingy, you can edit the whole file if you want to and destroy it. Um, really, really useful, especially if you've done two exact different changes in the same file that should really be different commits. I do? <laughs> Dick. <laughs> um, although, actually, Mr. Uh, Loudmouth up there is a big fan of git add dash p and just doing it on the whole thing. Um, which is also quite handy because uh, it does just runs through every file and you can either just stage it all or split it into chunks um, or just not commit that file at all, which is really handy. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's one that I actually do use a lot. Uh, so yeah. um, commit amend again. It's one of those ones where if you just need to make a quick amend to your previous commit message or if you accidentally you've been through and you're just like, ah, oh, I was meant to add that file on that last commit, you can just add the file straight up, um, get everything ready as if you're doing a new commit and then just do commit does amend. It'll, um, it'll then prompt you up for the message. You can just change the message and then it'll just magically add the rest of the changes in. Um, so then it's really handy if you, uh, if you haven't, well, well, if you haven't pushed yet. No, it's only a previous commit. If you, um, I had to take it out, but the, um, well, actually I'll think you a bit at the end, but yeah, if you've, um, if you've already pushed up, you have to, um, you'll have to force push afterwards, um, or rebase and then push up. Um, but yeah, so if it's, if it's local previous commit, it get amends your uh, thingy, but I think rebase it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so if you have to go back and update multiple commits, um, then you want rebase in your life. Um, and if you do an interactive rebase, um, it lets you go back through and change subtle things about all of your um, previous commits. So if you do like like head tilt previous 10, it brings you up a list of all the commits you have and you can then, um, well, pick which ones are in it if you actually want to do it. Um, you can then say which ones you actually want to modify. So if you did say you need to go back through and add something to the start of all your commit messages, you can go back through and edit them and then it'll just prompt you through each one. You get each message and you just write it in, save it. And then um, once you're all done, you can then push that back up. So it's uh, pretty handy. And actually, that's it, I think. <laughs> so yeah, that's me.